So once you get home, you got to make sure that that time that you have at home, it's, you know, it's dedicated to the family. <laughs> Welcome to Livestream. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Plains, with my co-host, Jeremy Applegate. How you doing this Friday, Jeremy? Is it Friday? It's Friday. Hot damn. How you doing? Not bad. How you doing? Very good. Very good. So today we're going to do something a little different, right? Yep. Um, we've been getting a lot of questions, and we want to be able to give them some good answers from our listeners. So I heard you had some questions there for me. Yeah, let's get right into it. All right, let me see. Let me see what you got. So the first question is from Carlos in Miami. Carlos from Miami. Dr. Plains. First wanted to say, I absolutely love the podcast. You guys are great. Awesome. My question is this. My wife and I have six kids between 6 and 12. Love them to death. But when they decide to start my day off in chaos, how do I refocus myself to prepare, prepare for the workday? That's a great question, Carlos. Um, thank you, Jeremy. I believe that the best way to handle, I go through it too. You know, we have three oh, yeah, boys. You guys have young kids. Yeah. We have three young boys from the ages of three to six. One is going to be seven already. Um, I think the best way to do it is even if you're in those stressful situations, you got to be able to adapt. So basically you cannot let, remember what I always say, you got to, the night before, before you go to bed, you got to reflect on your day and what you want to accomplish for the following day. And no matter what, you got to basically make it as a schedule, like like when you're going to go see a patient or you got to go see a client. Yeah. So you cannot let those distractions affect you. And there might be arguments between you and your wife, like, oh, you do this, oh, you do that. But at the end of the day, you guys got to understand that, you know, you signed up for these responsibilities and, yep. these are your, and these are your children. So you got to make sure that you're there for them as well. That's true. That's very true. But you cannot let them distract you. You know, you got to still stay focused on what your goals are for the day. So if it means, you know, going to the gym at six in the morning and then, you know, taking a shower, doing a little bit of prayer and then going to work, you still got to continue with the consistency. You got me on this too. But I mean, obviously my kids are old, so I don't have to worry too much about the little ones. But, you know, on your way into work, what are you doing on the way into work? What are you doing in the car? You know, what are you, uh, are you listening to a podcast? You know, the way I live my life is like, I try to make every minute count. So even when I'm driving to work or I'm driving here this morning, I was listening to a podcast or I was listening to an audible. Yep. Um, sometimes I shift it. Sometimes I do some prayer, you know, while I drive. And sure. then sometimes I do audibles, you know, because sometimes the routine could get a little, you know, too common. So I just change it up as I feel is necessary or what I need more for the day. That's a good idea. Are there any books out there where um, it helps people? Uh, with respect to, you know, separating personal life and work life. and Hey, that. I got the perfect book for you guys. It's called The Power of One More by M. Milet. Mm. Um, I read that book probably 60 days ago, close to 60 days ago. Listened to, listened to it more than heard it, okay. um, than read it. But he tells you how he breaks down his schedule. I don't know if you remember in our previous podcast where I said that um, he breaks his day in six-hour compartments so, you know, from 12 to 6 is one day, from 6 to 12 is another day, and from 12 to 6 is another day. So he breaks those 24 hours in four different compartments. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, Carlos had a good point. I think that's what everybody struggles with, you know, is, um, is, is the challenges of starting the work day off on the right foot. Yeah, because even, even, even the, you got to have the work-life balance too, but you also have to have the family balance. Yeah. So once you get home... You got to make sure that that time that you have at home, it's, you know, it's dedicated to the family. I have issues with that because sometimes I get home and, you know, we have the CFO or we have, you know, a vendor or an attorney that wants to talk to us at six or seven o'clock at night. And my wife is like, why do you need to schedule these calls at these times? Yeah. But sometimes that's the only time that's available for them. So it's really hard. Like the other day I had a Cardone Ventures call at seven o'clock at night. On Tuesday, on Tuesday evening. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because um, it's a, it's it's not really a standing joke, but it's a standing joke. Like we are, we're always on the clock, you know, twenty four seven. We're always on the clock, and 
You never know what time. I mean, we've been talking on Friday sometimes till 8, 9 o'clock at night. Yep. Luckily, you don't go on date nights, but. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, I'll take you out this, this weekend, I promise. All right. I promise. I guess you guys went out to dinner last night, though. Oh, yeah, we did. That, how, it was nice, huh? Where yeah, do you guys nice. go? We just went to, down to Long Doggers. Okay, nice. cool. It's all about spending that time, even if it's short. But, you know, the spouses need to also understand that, you know, when you make this type of commitment, there's gonna, it's going to be really hard to balance everything 50-50. It's almost impossible. So you you got to be focused on what your, you know, if your priority is. Now, I wouldn't use the word priority, but if you guys align with the same vision, right, we go back to the vision. You yep. also got to use your vision in your personal life. You know, if, if, if you guys are not aligned in your vision in your personal life or your professional life, it's going to be a disaster. So if somebody wants to just work 20 hours a week and the other spouse wants to build a 20 group practice, you know, dental group, you're not going to be able to do that. What if uh, what's the challenges with respect to, you know, the husband and the wife working and trying to manage that time, trying to manage that schedule? I think, I think in order for that to be su- successful, you need to create a schedule. So, and you cannot break it. So, for example, if you want to do vacations, you got to block it out. You know, you just got to make sure and hold each other accountable. At the, un- in the end of the day, you guys got to hold each other accountable because no one else is going to be able to do that. Yeah, and I think some people struggle with the fact that, hey, I can book, an, I can book a vacation six months down the road, but something always comes up. To where, you know, oh, we're going to have to push that. We're going to have to push that. We're going to have to push that. And I think sometimes some of the most successful engagements that you can have with your partner or your spouse is just um, do it sporadically. Yeah. Just pack your stuff and go. Hey, that's kind of the the win with Trish and I have at this time. You know, our youngest is 21 years old. So, you know, um, I'll tell a quick story. We woke up on a Friday and we're like, you know what, let's go to Nashville. And we just jumped in the car and we were gone. Really? You yeah, did that? Absolutely. That's awesome. So, you know, it's a little different with young kids, but, um, you know, that's uh, being spontaneous. And yeah, you got to be spontaneous. And, 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 and to Carlo's question, as, as you get older, things will get a lot easier yeah. for you guys to spend more time. You won't be going to restaurants and the kids screaming everywhere and, you know, throwing silverware and bread across the table. So... <laughs> I, I've, I've been through it. I was going to say, be, you sound like you've experienced that. I've experienced it, so <laughs> I completely understand. It's, it's very hard to have those enjoyable times, but I think that it's about the, um, the effort that you put into it, you know? Yeah. And even if it's just to have a glass of wine with your spouse, even for 30 minutes at the end of the day, where you guys can just unwind together, I think that that goes a long way. I agree. I agree. And I've cheated a little bit. I've already read some of these questions myself, so it kind of <laughs> leads us into this, uh, into uh, what Kurt from Orlando is asking. He says, Dr. Plains, help me. I need help when I have a complete bullshit day at work. <laughs> and I get home, the wife asks me about my day, my kids are excited to see me. But to be honest with you, I don't want to be around anybody. All I want to do is throw back a six-pack and watch the game. You know, how do I walk into the front door without bringing work inside with me? Yeah, that's a deep question. Yeah. His name Kurt? Kurt. Kurt. Um, so what I, I, I totally understand what he's asking because I feel the same way, especially on Mondays when you just start your week and you know, you got Monday night football, Yeah. you know, you got the chiefs or, you know, the dolphins or a team you like, whatever it is, but you know, it's kind of hard to, um, to just take that away. But what I like to do is, you know, when you drive home, that's why I like long drive home, even if it's just for 30 or 45 minutes, just try to unwind, listen to music or something that you like to do. I like audibles or podcasts. I feel that that's where I get the best um, stress relief because I connect to the to the the guy holds, hosting the podcast. Yeah. Um, in this case is Andy Frizzella, for example. Yeah. I listen to a lot of his podcasts, and he's real, you know. And he says that you know these problems are never going to go away. So you gotta you gotta basically program your mind and your brain that you're never going to be able to. Like completely disregard it. Yeah, Andy's a Andy's a no bullshitter kind of guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's awesome. So what you got to learn is to understand that the problem is going to always be there. Yep. But when you're driving home, just try to unwind. And when you get home, it's okay to have a couple beers and talk to your wife. I when my wife asks me how my day goes, I say, you know, it went okay, you know. But I realize that when you talk about your work 
at home, it brings even more problems to your personal mm, life. Yeah. I think you just got to basically block that out and just focus on the kids and your spouse and really not focus so much at work. Yeah, I like how you uh, said, you know, use that time between, use that commute to kind of re- re-energize yourself, you know, put yourself into a family, a family mindset. And then when you're ready to walk into that front door, you're there already. And it's hard. It's like constant work. It's like going to the gym. You know, it's not it's not going to be perfected overnight. You're going to have to spend a lot of time working on it. For sure. I, I mean, I'm guilty. So it's it, that's a great question, Kurt. But you got to be able to basically try to block it out while you're there at the house till the following day. And what if that doesn't work? If what, what doesn't work? You can't block it out. It's just like it's been eating at you, eating at you, eating at you. I mean, then what happens? Then you got to just let it out, yeah. you know, and hopefully your spouse is there to support you, you and understand you and, you know, be that shoulder to cry on. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we do cry. Hey, That's we cry, right. folks. We cry. Okay? Yeah. Just be that shoulder to cry on or support, you know, and be there by your side. Yeah. That's good. That's a good call. That's why it's so important that your partner is aligned with your vision, because at the end of the day, if she's like, I told you so, that was the stupidest thing you could have ever done. That doesn't work. Correct. That is not, uh, that's not being supportive. That's not being supportive. So there's a book, I, The Blueprint of the Wise Wife. I, it's a mm. biblical book. Okay. Um, it's biblical based, and I totally recommend every woman to read it um, because men don't want to hear about their mistakes because they had 95% of the men admit when they made a mistake or they know they made a mistake. Um, but when you check a man's ego and you make him feel guilty, that is also going to be a problem. Yeah. Is it, are, we, are we creating some psychology here? How to, how to, uh, how to read a man? <laughs> I just think that, you know, women in particular are sometimes too hard on the man. Okay. Um, and I think that if a man is working hard and has one common goal, which is the success of the family and the well-being of the family, don't be so hard on him. Be a little bit more supportive and help him be or realign with his vision or be aligned with his, his goals yeah, that's and true. his vision. That's true. So. That's true. That's a great question, Kurt, and, uh, and Carlos, those are awesome questions. So, um, you know, if you guys still, if you guys have other ideas and other questions that you want to talk about, you know, by all means, DM us. We're down for, uh, we're down for giving you some, uh, some information on that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what has been your biggest challenge um, being, I remember you used to work, um, you used to travel a lot. Yeah. It's very easy to, I mean, not easy, but it's a lot easier when you come to your spouse every night. But I have friends that travel 60 to 70% of the time they're in an airplane. I was doing Going that. from city to city. So what would you recommend to our listeners in regards to, you know, that type of work environment? If you are on the road all the time, and like you, like Doc said, if you're on the road from 60 to 70% of the time, you have to make it a point to, to connect with your spouse. You have to, any moment and you're driving in the car or you're sitting at the airport or you're, you know, wherever you are, you have to make sure that you are in communication with that individual because they care about you and they want to know um, how you're doing and they are and concerned because you're away from the house. You know, all that stuff builds into that conversation. Yeah, that's beautifully said. So thank you so much, Jeremy. And I hope I answered all your questions, guys. I'm here for you. Any other questions, please get back at me. Um, Thank you today. Listen to us at Livestream Podcast, Dr. Alex Plains, or you can follow us on Instagram, Dr. Alex Plains. Look forward to seeing you there.